You can also make the camera move in quite a variety of ways by using camera keyframes. And the best way to see what we're doing there is to move to the timeline workspace. And I would like to truck in on this character. So in this middle panel. So let's take a look at how I will do that. We'll go over to the camera tool and it's important to click on the tool properties here so that you can see the different keyframe tools that are available. So let's say here that I want to start this panel full size the way it is right now, but by the end of the panel I want to have moved to a close-up on her to show her emotion. So first thing I would do is set a keyframe at the beginning of the panel and the way to do that is with this icon here, it says KF for keyframe. You're adding one, you can see the plus symbol. And with that little arrow, you can see that it's kind of pointing to the beginning of a panel. So I will press that and look at the timeline down below as I do. Now we have this symbol here that has appeared at the beginning of this panel to indicate that we have a keyframe. And here in our view, our camera has turned green we have our control point here in the upper left, as usual. The center point is a dot that's in the square in the in, square in the middle. And then also there's this indication here that will show you which of the camera keyframes we're illustrating. So let's say that by the end of the panel, I want to have moved in closer on her face. So I will add a keyframe at the end of the current panel, which is one of the choices. And now I have two marks here for two different keyframes. So I'm interested in changing this second keyframe. And since I'm already here, I'm going to zoom in and recenter it so that I'm focusing on her face. And so this is the ending keyframe. So now the scene starts like this. And as I move along the timeline, it's going to end with that tighter framing. An interesting thing to notice is that now the camera has changed from the first panel to the second panel where the transformation takes place to now the th even the third panel has changed to match the ending position of the camera move. So when we play the whole scene, I'm going to put this frame on just because I like to see what it looks like. I'm going to press the play button and we can watch as the scene starts and we start moving in from the starting position to the ending position of that camera move and then we continue with the tighter framing until the end of that scene. If I wanted to make a pan, I could use the same tools. Uh, I'm working on these last two panels. I could go to the camera tool, go to tool properties, and select a keyframe at the beginning. And then I need to create a keyframe for the ending of the panel. And so now I've got a couple boxes here. I'm not sure which one to drag. But this is basically your first keyframe, and this little square is your second keyframe. So I'll move the second keyframe over to where I want the pan to stop, and then I can play it. So you can see got the little pan move there, and then we've got his line. I'm going to put the mask on so that you can see it one more time and see the benefit of using that mask. So I'm going to press the play button, and here's the scene. We can see how it pans and then the pan stops. Now if I want to see what I'm doing in this timeline a little better, I can go up to the plus and minus tools. When we're in the timeline view, pressing the plus and minus tools doesn't make the drawing look any bigger. It just makes the timeline portions look bigger. So if you want a little bit more control, and the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to show you how you can add a keyframe anywhere you want to in the middle. Now, normally I wouldn't in a case like this, but if I wanted to, let's choose a part, let's say about 
a third of the way in. And I want to add another camera keyframe in case I wanted the camera to move in an unusual way. So I'm going to press the normal keyframe button, the one that doesn't say the beginning or the end, it just says KF. And so I can see on this timeline that I have three of these diamond shapes which indicate camera free keyframes. So it's the second one I'm interested in playing with. By the same token here, it's the second one that I know I'm going to be moving. So just for show, I'm going to move this up a bit and create a sort of arc camera move. And I'm going to move the playhead back. I'm going to put that mask on and I'm going to press play so we can see what that looks like. Well, that looked pretty strange, but it also did exactly what I wanted it to do, which is that the camera moved up and then it moved down. So for us looking at it, it appears that the artwork is moving down because the camera is moving up. So I'll play it once again. And that just shows you how you can add extra keyframes. If you were watching a butterfly moving across the screen, you might want to change that and add numerous keyframes. And again, the way to do that is to select this keyframe button. You'll notice that the keyframe, add a keyframe at the beginning and add a keyframe at the end of the current panel are both ghosted out because we already have keyframes at those. And so there doesn't make any sense to be able to add another one. In the first example of using the moving camera, everything happened within the constraints of one individual panel, but a camera move can take place over the course of a scene if you would like it to. So let's, for example, say that we want our camera move to start in the middle of this particular panel. So I'll go to the camera tool, go to tool properties, add a keyframe, not at the beginning, but just where I want it specifically. So now I have my first keyframe, which is in essence the starting point. I move along. Let's say I want a second keyframe somewhere in the second panel. So I will add a keyframe here as well. And that is our first keyframe and there's our second keyframe. So I can move our second keyframe to whatever desired position I have. Let's say I want to move in on her face. And then let's say I want one keyframe to be at the end of this panel and I would click on this keyframe button. And now it has placed a keyframe at the end of this panel. And now I can move that one to zoom in on her crying. All right, so if we go to the beginning, the first keyframe starts us going. The second one changes the trajectory. And then we end up with the third. 